because we are kings and our words matter. The Bible is a revelation of God's love. The Bible is God speaking to us. God reaching out to us. God embracing us. God making us feel like he is there. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. That is what he's saying. God's words bring comfort and strength and consolation and boldness and confidence and courage. He can feel the presence and the power of God. That is why he's thrilled. God of glory, God of wonder, God of beauty, you reign through all eternity before the mountains or the earth had been found. You were our I believe the true Christianity is something that is experienced with much feeling. Don't get rid of the feelings, my friend. Have the feelings. Feelings are good, you know. I'm not against you shouting at the cricket matches, you know. One fellow came in here and started whistling one day. And somebody was upset. Said, How can you allow him to whistle? Call that fellow and talk to him. I said, leave him. And he's a young, just a young fellow. You must be glad he's not sitting in some cinema theater and whistling today. <laughs> At least he came to church and he's whistling. Leave him alone. Let him enjoy himself. He's enjoying. He's, I mean, he, I'm preaching and he's whistling. <laughs> so man, that, that must have been better than a movie, you know. <laughs> Let him do that, you know. Leave the guy alone. 
Oh, the sanctity of... Oh, nothing will happen to the sanctity. God doesn't want that kind of a phony respect. God wants you to enjoy him. God wants you to enjoy him and he enjoys you. And you enjoy him. That's the whole purpose of our coming together, you see. And I really mean it, you know. So I never told anything to the guy. I said, let him whistle if he wants to whistle. You know, if that's what he feels like. If he's feels, feeling so elated and so happy, why would I want to spoil his joy? Man, it's between him and God. He's not just whistling for me. He's, he's hearing some truth that is thrilling him. And he's so fine, you know. As long as he's doing it unto the Lord, that's fine with me. They didn't jump up and shout, roll, scream. I am for all of that, you know. No problem, you know. I'm only worried when they're so stiff, you know. <laughs> then we'll have to call the doctor to check and see if he's alive, you know. <laughs> as long as he's doing something, I'm fine. <laughs> all right? Amen. We are a live church. We're not a dead church. Some people are dead and embalmed. <laughs> see, not just dead, they're embalmed, you see. Have you seen embalmed Christians? <laughs> In some countries, they don't bury immediately. They bury after one week or ten days, you know, you know it, you know. They keep them for so many days. The undertaker takes the body and prepares the body and you inform everybody and it takes time for them to all show up. And so they postpone the burial for another week or so, you know. And, and, and they prepare the body so nicely, you know. They embalm it so good. I mean, it's unbelievable. I, a friend of mine died. The guy always wore jeans, never saw him in suit. And he's kind of dirty all the time, you know. He's just a very casual guy. Never put on tie and suit and all of that. And when he died, I went there. I couldn't believe. They even dyed his hair and everything. And put on a first class suit and a tie and everything. And he's just... Smelling so good and looking so good. I couldn't believe that this was the guy. Except there was no life in him. That's what you call an embalmed person. Not just dead, he's embalmed. Embalmed means it makes you look so good. No stinking, nothing. Makes you look so good, almost looking like alive, but dead. <laughs> Sometimes even better looking than when you were alive but dead. <laughs> now somebody, people are understanding now what I'm talking about. <laughs> now I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about dead people. I'm talking about Christians going to church. They're dead and embalmed. You know. They got their best clothes on. They got their best perfumes on. They got their best everything on. But just that life is not there. They just don't have that spiritual life in them. So, you know, there's no feeling. Absolutely void of feelings. I just can't understand it. And they call this religion. They call this some kind of a religious exercise, you know. And I tell you, God doesn't want that. God is into relationship, not some dead religion. And we are not here to follow some dead religion. We are here as children of God, worshipping our Heavenly Father, hearing the words of the Heavenly Father. So a child of God usually feels something for God. So if you feel something, be glad. You are alive. You are a child of God. If you love God, you get excited about God, and you're thrilled about the worship, you're thrilled about it. Be glad because you are a child of God. You're alive, Christian. And there's nothing wrong with you. Now let me give you some signs about how this manifests. How the spirit of adoption that cries out Abba Father manifests itself from us. Alright. First of all it reveals itself through the feelings that rise up within us. When we read the Bible or hear the Bible preached. The word of God preached. Alright. There's a reaction to the word of God. As we read it, meditate upon it and spend time in it. Or as we hear the word of God preached. A believer hearing it, you know, is, he hears it totally differently. There is, a, there is a sense of excitement. A lot of people don't understand that. Oh, what's so thing? I mean, when, you're, when, when, you, when people preach, you must keep quiet. That's what everybody thinks. Preaching time is the dullest time, you know. Everybody sits in their chairs and, and some people sit like this. <laughs> you know, 
that's reverence for them you know but preaching and reading the word of god all of these things creates a great deal of excitement in a child of god he listens intently his heart is open his mind is open he grabs and he just literally soaks in everything that is said he hungers for more he wants it you can see it in his eyes you can see it in his face why because let me let me illustrate it again you know because illustrations uh, really really help you know like i said when a father comes back from work as soon as the sound of the vehicle is heard the child gets excited right if it's a real small child look at the excitement that even a small child that can't even express himself so well he'll just jump and scream and shout because daddy is coming right and when the father comes in if the father just picks up the child and cuddles the child and hugs the child kisses the child or plays with the child you then look at the face of the child he's not like church people <laughs> you know oh let us play now you know no you can see it all over his face his face is full of joy he's exuberant he just he just thrilled with the father why because the father is now cuddling him embracing him kissing him playing with him there is such a joy he finds in the presence of the father now if the father doesn't even touch the child and stays far away and just speaks words of love just look at the response just speaks words of love to the child look at the kind of response that is evoked by such words words of love go in there and the child begins to smile and just you know he can't contain himself because he knows there is someone that is talking to him out of love in his heart he responds so when a child of god comes to hear the word of god when a child of god begins to read the word of god it is so different for him because to him it is the father speaking to him words of love hello it is his father he is really a child and he is the father and they and they understand that the words of love are flowing the bible is a revelation of god's love the bible is god speaking to us god reaching out to us god embracing us god making us feel like he is there don't worry everything will be all right that is what he's saying god's words bring comfort and strength and consolation and boldness and confidence and courage he can feel the presence and the power of god that is why he is thrilled but a person who is not a child of god doesn't understand anything he can't understand anything why because he is not a child now if you go down the street and somebody is sitting you know in the street corner and you say hello son you know he look at you funny probably throw some rocks at you you know he thinks you're crazy you know if you reach out to him saying come on son you know because he knows that you are not his daddy and he is not your son <laughs> hello <laughs> why is this man calling me son you know that's his question but if you come home and call your son son the child's face just turns into something beautiful because the words of love reaching out to him amen that's why that's the kind of effect the word of god creates because the word of god is god speaking words of love to his children reaching out to the children embracing the children comforting consoling strengthening putting faith in the children encouraging it's like a tap on the shoulder that's when the child of god feels good amen in the presence of god now secondly it reveals itself in the prayer life also just trying to show you how the spirit of adoption shows itself it shows itself as you hear the word as you read the word you can see the spirit of adoption inside of you shows up in its reaction to the word it shows up also in your prayer life the word abba is a word that is an aramaic word used by jewish people in the days of jesus it's a word that indicated closeness and intimacy not everybody used that word you know when when they felt close and intimate that is when they used the word abba it's a very extraordinary word not just a word father but it goes beyond that it's a word that indicated intimacy and closeness abba father 
So when you feel close to God, that is what you want to call him. Because you feel close to him, you love him, and you feel a great deal of love for him. But more than that, there is something more in it. You see, the slaves, see, in those days there were slaves in homes. Now, the slave owner is a very much like a father to them. You know, these, these slaves are grown up in, their, in that home. He gives them food, clothes, everything. He takes care of them. He's like a father. But the thing is, they can never call him father. They'll have to come standing, folding their hands. They have to stand far away. They have to take orders. They have to be afraid. But never come. And they have no privilege of calling him father. But the children in that same house have the privilege of calling him father. That is why Romans 8, 15 puts, us, puts it like this. How does it put it? It says, for they have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. See, it's not a spirit of bondage. It is not the spirit of slavery to fear. We are not behaving like slaves. We are not a people filled with the spirit of slavery to fear. But we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We are not slaves. We don't behave like slaves. But it's a sad thing that Christian people have not understood these truths. You know. They have not comprehended these truths. And that's caused a great deal of problems. You know, I remember, uh, you know, in those days when the service started, they'll have prayer for some time in the initial stages, in the initial few minutes. And that prayer destroys anything good that may happen that day. You know, totally. I mean, because they'll stand there and say, Oh God, we are just so unworthy, just worms in your sight. So totally unworthy, oh God. We are not even worthy to come before you, but we have come anyway. Now, what are you going to preach after that kind of prayer, you know? After that, they conduct three and a half hours of service, you know. Not just one and a half hours. Three and a half hours of torture after that. (laughs) After saying that we are no good worms and dust and, and, and unworthy people, then you try to interact with God. What kind of interaction would that be, you know? Crazy. And it's totally wrong, you see. We set the trend by calling him the father. We call him Abba Father. And we talk about how privileged we are to be the sons and daughters of God. How thankful we are for the privilege that is given to us. And we rejoice in his presence. That's the way you start. And then you can have a very good service. You can go on for a whole day also. It won't matter because you are setting the trend for better things. Amen. So we don't have the spirit of bondage to fear, not a spirit of slavery to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. But then there is one more thing, finally, and that is, it says, we cry, Abba, Father. Not just that we call him Abba, Father. We cry, Abba, Father. It's a stronger word. Crying is a stronger word, obviously, than the word call. You're not just calling him Abba Father. You are crying out to him saying Abba Father. What does this cry mean? This cry indicates a deep emotion, fervency and earnestness on the part of the one who's doing the calling. It's not just calling saying Abba Father. No, he's calling with a deep emotion, fervency and earnestness. There is some emotion involved. Like I said, they got rid of emotion and uh, Christians, many, in many circles, Christians got rid of emotions. And uh, they pray to God. They call God Father. But uh, he's like a distant God, you know, somebody. Sometimes they don't even God call God the Father. They're still calling him in the Old Testament terms. Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, God who hung the heavens, God who hung the stars. They'll say everything, but the Father won't come from their mouth because they have no revelation of God the father (laughs) but there is something about a person who is connected to God as a child the child and father connection you will see that fervency the prayer will be a fervent prayer a prayer with a deep emotion attached to it because he is talking to the father if that person is not a child of God, then it's a cold and calculated prayer. No involvement will be there. Sometimes they can't even pray without being having everything written down, you know. 
they can't even pray one single prayer without even having it written down i don't i don't mean to say writing it down is wrong or uh, right reading a prayer or sermon is wrong but the thing is this jonathan edwards one of the greatest preachers who brought a great revival and awakening in america uh was a person who was a very gifted a very highly educated person was president of princeton university you know and a very highly gifted person he was so worried that people will be drawn by his gift of preaching and his emotion and the, all that accompanies his preaching the fiery preaching will captivate people so one time he preached a sermon he simply wrote it and read to avoid that he didn't want his emotion to get the people he just wanted the word of god to get it that was a good intention and they say that when he just read the sermon people just came crying and knelt down and received jesus as lord and savior by the thousands so i don't mean to say that if you read it it's wrong but i'm saying this cold calculated unattached no involvement reading that often times happens you know there's nothing no father son relationship suppose your son comes and says you know having written down something he says now dear now dear head of the house <laughs> the maker of this house the provider of all things the one who rented this house and paying for everything for us we beseech thee today that you will take us at 1 o'clock to Baskin Robbins <laughs> in Prasavakam and buy us two scoops of butter scotch if it be thy will to thy unworthy servants who are like worms <laughs> now if your child prayed a prayer like that you'll be so embarrassed you didn't want the neighbor to see that you know you will either slap him and take him inside the house and deal with him <laughs> how many of you like to, uh, a prayer like that i mean you want ice cream and uh, just go for ice cream just tell your daddy you want some ice cream and and he's he's waiting for you to ask and he will give you know that's the way it is usually you know but the thing is you know if i was listening to this kind of a presentation i'd say what kind of drama is this <laughs> you know why do you want to play such a drama this drama won't get you anything you see so a lot of dramas are happening all over the world it gets them nothing it's a big drama and heaven looks at it and say why are you playing this drama what are you trying to enact what are you trying to say you see crazy it is but they do it that way it's cold calculated and 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 they they just have to read it in a cold calculated manner and even in reading they have problem you know and 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 it's just pitiful you know because there is no father son relationship there is no life there there is no salvation there is no redemption there there is no real father son relationship there a father son relationship leads to a prayer where there is an emotion fervency and earnestness about that prayer it comes from the heart of the person where the person is speaking to god the father amen all right worship also is the same way worship you know is also the same way now you can tell you know whether people have the spirit of adoption or not by the way they worship you know when you have the spirit of worship uh, when you have the spirit of adoption then worship takes on another new dimension you forget about yourself and you concentrate on worshiping god you are not so conscious about you know what everybody thinks and how you got to maintain your dignity and all of that stuff you know you begin to praise god and worship god you know some people have a hang up about this and that and all i don't see why you know because the bible says shout unto god with the voice of triumph oh clap ye your hands all ye people you see the bible says lift up your hands and praise god the bible you know you can be silent and praise god also but don't make it all the time and then it'll be too silent that's only good for morgs you know not for here <laughs> but i'm saying there are different ways to praise the lord and uh, 
you must be free to do what comes out of your heart to reach out to god in worship you see don't be restricted by this and that don't feel obligated to do something don't feel forced to do anything you know and nowadays it's become such a cheap thing everybody lift up your hands everybody shout hallelujah three times everybody you know it's like auctioning hallelujah you know I went to a meeting they're saying three hallelujahs please and everybody say hallelujah 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 <laughs> no more the fourth one won't come because unnecessary is asked only for three you know <laughs> but the spirit within us that cries abba father is full of earnestness and fervency it cries out to god in all sincerity in all earnestness that's a true believer if you are heart reaching out is reaching out to god hungering for god thirsting for god and reaches out to god in worship and prayer and so on and hearing the word and so on i'll tell you my friend you can be sure that you are indeed a child of god may there be no doubt about it thanks be to god who always god says us triumph in his name thanks be to god who always god says us to win yeah thanks be to god who always god says us triumph in his name thanks be to god thanks be to god we have overcome hallelujah You're the one, hallelujah, hallelujah. One who made a way for us, triumph in his name. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks be to God, who always comes. Says us to try your fears, hey. Thanks be God, who always causes us to win. Yeah. Thanks be God, who always causes us to try your fears, hey. Thanks Clap be God. God. Thanks be God, we have overcome. Jesus, you're the one, hallelujah, hallelujah, the one who made a way for us to triumph in the name of the world.